Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, my name is LJ and you're watching No Clutch Garage. And today we're gonna to be talking about testing E85. And more specifically, we're gonna be testing E85 with the Fuelit test kit. And I got this test kit for about 35 bucks on fuelit.com. And it has a few things in here that will help you determine the alcohol content of E85. This is important because a lot of times we go to the pump stations and we just kind of dump E85 into our gas tank thinking it's actually E85. But a lot of those times it's not actually E85. It's usually a more diluted version of that around E70, E75, E80. Uh, and you know, there are some times when you do get E85 or a little bit higher and that's always good, but it's not always that way. But before we get to testing the E85, I wanna talk a little bit about E85. E85, of course, as we know, it's ethanol, and ethanol is an alcohol. And so E85 is gonna burn quicker, but it's also gonna burn cooler. So a lot of people use it as an alternative to racing fuel because it has really good properties that can increase the power of your car. As I already said, it burns cooler, it does burn faster, but it also has a higher octane content and that can make a lot of difference in your fueling, especially when you're seeking higher horsepower numbers. Now that being said, E85 is a higher volume fuel. So you're typically gonna have to upgrade your fuel system when you're using E85. So for my application in particular, I drive a BMW. So that means upgrading my high pressure fuel pump, my low pressure fuel pump, and maybe at some point the injectors, if it comes to that, a lot of times port injection is enough to mitigate most of those problems. Some of the biggest questions that I get on my DMs are actually about E85. And I'm not sure why, but I think part of the reason is because my build has been largely based on E85. And dealing with fuel is actually one of the few times that I actually get to use my knowledge to make the right decisions in terms of fueling. Some of you may or may not know, but I actually have a degree in science and more specifically biology and chemistry. So when I get to do this kind of thing, it's actually kind of cool to teach people about what they should do or what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong and things to look out for. So a lot of times I'll go into my DMs and I get this question. If I'm trying to get to an E30 mix, how many gallons of E85 should I add to my gas tank? And I always try to answer the same way. And the way I usually answer is you should test U85 because a lot of times we get E85 from a pump and it's not actually E85. So it's always good to test your fuel every time you go and use it. Unless you're buying stuff like, you know, the VP uh, mixes that have to be accurate or Ignite E90, you're pretty much gonna have to get a tester and you're gonna have to test every time you refuel and you're gonna have to compensate for the ethanol content. So, you know, it's not always gonna be, oh, just add two gallons of E85 and you'll be good. No, sometimes you'll have to add more. And that's why it's important that you test these things because if you don't have enough E85, you're not gonna get the benefits of E85. And if you have too much E85, you may experience fuel cuts or something like that because your fuel system may not be able to keep up with the demands of the ethanol mix you are running. So this is why you cannot base your fuel options just off of how big your tank is and try to make the deductions off of that. It's not the right way to do it. You can do it if, uh, if the pump you're at is very consistent, but typically if you're taking your fueling seriously, if you're you know, if you were taking racing seriously or anything like that, you don't wanna take any chances because anything wrong with the octane content can mess with your timing, depending on your tune. If it's a very, very specific tune, very dialed in tune, your timing might be all over the place. You might be running a little lean or, you know, a little rich. And those are simply some things that you cannot risk when you are pushing your car at that level. So right now we're gonna take a quick look at the ethanol test kit, and then we're gonna do a little bit of testing and show you how all of this works. So we're gonna go ahead and open this. This can also be used as a container, by the way. If you need to collect a sample of E85, you can put it in here, and then you can put in one of the test tubes in here. By the way, I'll have this test kit, this specific test kit, linked in the description down below. So if you need to pick one up, you can go ahead and pick one up make it easier for you. So the kit comes with some gloves 
and of course these are one-time use gloves if you don't want to get your hands dirty and actually I don't recommend you getting fuel all over your skin that's actually it's an irritant and can be bad for you we have a little microfiber cloth to clean off your vials it's a little fuel it microfiber next thing you're gonna have these little pipettes and you have two of them and you're gonna have two of these and these are the test tubes and I think they included two just for convenience you only really need one so we're gonna use one we're gonna put the other one away so the reason you have two pipettes is because you want to have one for your water and you want to have one for your E85 you never want to mix them if you use the pipette to go into one substance and then the other you're actually contaminating you're actually contaminating and you can get inaccurate results now for most applications in the street this is not going to be such a huge deal but um i am a scientist and it's important that i point that out all right guys so obviously this is a lot more technical than you know a uh, real world application but i just kind of want to show you how this works in a very clear and concise way so when we grab our test vial you will notice that you have right here a water line so the first thing we want to do is we're going to grab some water and we're going to fill it to the water line hey guys and before we continue i actually want to bring something up you see the line right above where it says water line that's where you need to fill up the water but there is a correct way of reading this. So you're not gonna fill up to where the top of the water is. There is actually this uh, effect on water that happens because water has very high surface tension. It's actually gonna curve a little bit and form this thing called a meniscus. So if you look closely, the water is kind of gonna curve in a little bit. So I know it's really hard to see, but you're not gonna want to measure from the top of the water line you're gonna want to measure from the bottom of that little bubble and that will give you the right measurement for the water to show you kind of what I'm talking about I'm gonna add the water to the line so to anybody right there would be where you need to fill but it's actually not accurate and it's really hard to capture this uh, with a camera but there is a space between the top of the water and that little bubble and so what you want to do is you want to fill until the bottom of that little bubble is at the line and to me that's that's where it's looking it's at so if you actually see the water is gonna look like it's actually a little bit higher so now that we have our water to the water line we're gonna grab our E85 sample and we're gonna go ahead and add it and right here it says fuel line we're going to add it to the fuel line so i don't know if you can see there up close but you can kind of see stuff moving around so what we're going to do now is we're going to shake it up and then let it set and that's going to tell us the correct ethanol content so now we're going to put our cap on and we're gonna let it sit for a little while. All right guys, so it looks like it finally settled and look at that. It looks to be right at E85. So this is actually really, really good quality E85 from the pump. And I got this E85 at a local gas station. And I have to, I mean, I have to drive about 30 minutes, but it's in the city over. And I'm actually very, very impressed by the quality. Every time I test there is very consistent, but lately uh, it seems like, lately it seems like it's been more consistent and I'm actually very surprised that it was E85 and not anything below that especially since in the winter the blends tend to be a little bit more watered down uh this seems to be a very very good quality of e85 all right guys that has been it for the e85 testing video 
thank you guys for stopping by if you did. I hope you found this interesting. I try to keep it as simple and yet as professional as possible. Obviously, I wasn't wearing the goggles. They were just kind of for show. But um, in a professional setting, of course, I'd be wearing them. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask them down in the comments down below. Shoot me a message on Instagram. I try to keep up with those the best I can. Sometimes I can't. As always, I'm available through Instagram at no Clutch Garage, And that's honestly the best way you'll probably get a hold of me. Guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from this video. I try to keep it as simple and as clean and concise as I could. Of course, guys, if you have a question, leave it down in the comments down below. Go ahead and give this video a like if you liked it. Go ahead and subscribe if you wanna see more of this. Go ahead and share it with somebody that might find it interesting. And go ahead and follow me on Instagram at no Clutch Garage to stay up to date with all the latest news for my channel. But as always guys, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later.